What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Hangout Spot, where you already know it's real talk, boxing talk, live from my man cave, it's your boy Johnny, and let's talk boxing, because today I have a very, very special guest, absolutely an honor to have this gentleman on. He is the WBO welterweight champion of the world. He's 26-0, 20 knockouts, and he won the interim portion of that title back in May by brutally knocking out an undefeated fighter at the time by the name of Giovanni Santillan in the 10th round. And I mean, if you haven't seen this young man fight, do yourself a favor and check it out, man. He's all action. He's the real deal. And the future is extremely bright. So without further ado, let me bring in my man, the WBO welterweight champion of the world, Brian Norman Jr. My brother. Welcome What's to good? the hangout spot, man. Welcome to the hangout I'm, I'm spot. I'm happy to be here, man. I'm happy to be here. No, listen, it is a pleasure to have you. And first and foremost, congratulations, man. You are now a world champion. How does it feel? Uh, man, it feels good. It was a dream just to get here. You get what I'm saying? But it's a lot more to go. It's still three more belts out there. And even after that, there's still a whole lot more living and doing a whole lot more hands to be thrown. So I'm just enjoying the ride. I feel you, man. And right now, I think um, you and Jesse Bam Rodriguez, I think you guys are the youngest world champions right now because you're 23 years old, right? Yeah, I'm 23. Is he 24? He might be. I think both of you guys, yeah, you might be the yeah. youngest. Yeah, yeah. You, see? you might be the youngest. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Listen, but uh, I wasn't kidding. Like I said in the introduction, man, very, very impressive performance um, for my uh, viewers if you did not see that fight, make sure you check it out because Brian Jr. did his thing. Coming into that fight, you were fighting a guy, Giovanni Santillan, who was undefeated. And he was coming off a huge knockout against another highly touted welterweight at the time, Alexis Rocha. Mm -hmm. And, Chad, you just, you just broke him down, man. You demolished him, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> I'm not surprised you won, but I'm kind of surprised in the fashion that you did it because you chose to fight his fight. Mm -hmm. Why? Why'd you? Why'd you go that route, Chad? Because you probably could have made it easier if you just would have boxed his ears off. Well, the thing is, first of all, any fight I fight is my fight. So he probably wanted to dog me out, but not knowing that's what that's what I specialize in anyway. So I came out looking just like this. While he came out, the guy he came out. So we could have boxed him around. That that was my daddy game plan the whole time. And I came out trying to do that. I was going to try to keep it a slow fight, you know, just do my thing and slowly pick it up. But I seen how heavy he was coming, and he wasn't finna stop. So it, I had to go to that dog fight. I had to go to the fire, and I embraced it. And I came I came out flying with uh with, uh flying colors. Oh, absolutely, man. I actually rewatched that fight for like the third time last night mm -hmm. in preparation for this, man. I mean, that last knockout was brutal. And then on top of that, champ, you just stepped right up over him like this. <laughs> what was that all about, man? Hit me out, though. Hit me out, though. You had to see what I was, what I was going through, though. So, look, everything was against me. I keep saying this. Everything was against me. Um, he was coming off this spectacular performance, like you just said, where he did the exact same thing I did to him, what he did to somebody else. Me, what my performance was, it was a no contest where I got dropped, I got caught with an elbow, I got cut up and everything like that. So I'm coming out the worst performance of my life, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's in his hometown, he number one, everything like that. So everything was against me going into it. So I, ha I had to take it there. Everybody came in booing me, and I don't know why, but when I when I, when I, I see the knockout before it even happened, I'm so serious. So I hit him with the punch. If you've seen, I was already walking towards him before he even hit the ground. So... It was just the fact that everybody was booing me. Like, it just fed into me. It just it just happened. For sure, man. Yeah, you were fighting in his hometown, and you're right. He came in with a lot of momentum. He was obviously the favorite going into that fight. Yeah. And real, real hardcore fans like myself, I've been following you for a minute. So, like I said, it's not a surprise, you know, that you won. But a lot of people didn't know who Brian Norman Jr. was before that fight. But they know who you are now. You know what I mean, and um, I thought I thought that you showed that type of emotion because he was he was kind of dirty in that fight. Yeah, were you he expecting was. him to be that dirty? Um, believe it or not, in the fight I ain't really paid no attention. I didn't notice all the dirty stuff until afterwards. So I really can't say in the fight I really wasn't thinking about it at all. The whole time I was thinking about just winning, winning, winning. That's all I was thinking about in the fight. Mm. 
I hear that, man. You can't let none of that, none of that uh distract you. I hear that. And shout out to Pops, man, Brian Sr., who I had on last week, man. And I had an absolute blast with him. Um, his confidence in you is just off the charts, as it should be. Obviously, you guys have a special bond, you know, both father and son and, and father and trainer. But before we get into like the future a little bit, let's take it back a little bit. I know mm -hmm. that I know that Pops was a pro boxer, a pro fighter. Um, when did you fall in love with boxing? When did you realize that you wanted to be a boxer? Was it at a young age when Pops was fighting? Yeah, so it was at a young age when he was fighting. Um, if you look at him now in real life, you'll think he is still out here working out and things of that nature, but he don't do nothing. So now imagine how he was back then. When he was all ripped up, cut up, you know, stuff like that. And he he was always work out with no shirt on. So you just see this this big swole cut dude just working the back, going crazy, jump roping, going crazy, sparring, going crazy. And I fell in love with that. I fell in love with that vision. It was just like Superman is right here in front of me. And every day he is doing his thing. You get what I'm saying? So I want to be Superman. How do I get to be able to do Superman? So uh, when I was seven years old, uh, he, he had vertigo for for a while at the time. But um, he finally decided to retire when I was seven. And I said, boom, this is my opportunity. Well, can I join the family business of knocking people's heads off? And 16 years later, we're here. Wow. That is that is crazy. And I know you, I know, I've been, you know, I follow you. So I know you play ball, you know, so you're you're an athlete, right? And it shows in the ring, you know, you're very athletic, but I don't, I don't play ball. Listen, listen, I don't play ball. I used to. Now, not even back then. I was just I was that dude in the neighborhood. That's it. In the real court, I was not him. Now let me tell you something. I just posted a uh, a post a little while ago with me playing basketball. That's probably what you referenced it to. Let me tell yes, you my sir. stat. Let me tell you my stat line. Zero points, seven <laughs> turnovers. Half of assists because it was it was a lucky assist. I got two rebounds though. I can tell you that. So <laughs> I was on point. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Did you uh, did you play did you play I any tried. other sports? I tried, but uh, listen, man. There's no there's no failure <laughs> for trying, man. I hear that. Did you uh, did you play other sports growing up, or was it just boxing? Yeah, uh, I tried football for a little minute, and I don't like the team. The team sport concept of it of I could be doing my thing but if I got 10 other guys who trash therefore I'm trash you get what I'm saying so I didn't like that for real um I did love basketball I never played it for real for real like I said just in the neighborhood and then I always wanted to run track for some reason um track been called me but I never did that because I was always boxing hmm. I hear that and by the way you mentioned jumping ropes man when I watch you jump rope that's special <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite that's thing to do. Yeah, that's but, insane, man. Yeah, but hear me out. So what I what I did was that was actually my weakness. So whatever your weakness is, literally focus on that and make it your strength. So that's what I did with that. I used to hate running. Now I'm running ten miles like it ain't nothing. And everything I hate, it's the reason why you hate it because you're not good at it. So that's what you need to be doing. So that's how I go about everything. Don't be afraid to come out of your comfort zone, right? Mm hmm. Absolutely, man. That's what greatness is all about. One thing I wanted to ask you, because I, I, I shot this to your pops, and I was surprised with the answer. I said that you you and him appear to be very different as far as, like, your personality, right? Because, you know, pops is a little loud, but you seem very quiet and reserved. But he said y'all really not different. Yeah. So is that true? We, we are the exact same. The only thing is... I am a little bit more reserved just because I don't like getting loud. So, like, even um, let's say somebody want to go back and forth real quick. I'm going to talk to you just like this. What do I got to get up there for? So, we still the same person. It's just I can't get loud. That's not my thing. But we think the same. We walk the same. We built the same. We look the same. So, we pretty much are the same as that person. Mm, I hear that. And, um, the relationship between you and your dad and you and your trainer, who is your dad, is that pretty much the same? Any differences yeah, they, they, in the gym as opposed to at home? No, they both go hand in hand. And the reason that is is because just like coaching and being a dad is teaching. That's all it is. It's all about teaching. Um, also, the, the father role is discipline and things of that nature, right? So uh, he ain't, ain't got to put my, put his hands on, but he teaching me discipline, discipline by you know, giving me this workout and making me making sure I do the time and 
over over a period of time, you start realizing, okay, the more disciplined I am, the better I get at whatever the situation may be. And that's with boxing. That's also with life. You get what I'm saying? So it go mm -hmm. hand in hand. I hear that. And I am here with WBO welterweight champion, Brian Norman Jr. Champ, I just want to say congrats again, because mm -hmm. unlike other fighters that have, that they come up with a lot of hype, you know, a lot of fanfare, you had to do it the hard way. You know what I mean? Like you didn't have that type of fanfare. And at 23 years old, I mean, you've accomplished so much. And like I said earlier, the future is bright. But I always said, like, being a fighter today has got to be hard because of the politics of the sport and social media. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of chirping out there. You know, I mean, a lot of it is unfair. Right. Because criticism is criticism. But a lot of it, you know, is hate. Like. Because of all the chatter on social media, like, do you, do you like, are you the type of fighter that will like draw that out? Like, are you actively on social media? Do you listen to some of the chatter on social media or criticism? So I really don't care about it, but I see everything. So I walk around with a chip on my shoulder as is. Like you just said, I don't got a lot of recognition. I ain't got none of that. Everybody else do. And it's the fact that I know I can knock these boys off. So now my whole thing is, the new chip on my shoulder is, I want to knock y'all favorite fight out. Y'all favorite one. And I'm going to have that smile on my face the whole time while it's tears rolling down your eyes. And I'm, and I'm going to embrace that moment. I love that moment. So it really don't get to me. It just feed me a little bit more. That's all. I hear that, man. I hear that. What do you like to do when you're not boxing? Spare time. Oh, to me, um, even with boxing, it's just a fun thing to do. I like really getting my mind right. So with boxing, you know, the after workout feeling, you feeling real good and stuff like that. So now it's all about trying to capture that feeling in different ways. So it could be running, meditating, walking, whatever the case may be. I personally like to read as well. So literally anything to keep keep your mind right. Forever, mm. forever learning. Got you, man. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about some of your options at 147, right? Like I said, the future is bright. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of chatter about fights, rumors. I mean, you know, Pops kind of clears some stuff up, you know, last week when we spoke. But he made it very, very clear that the chatter around Tiafimo Lopez wasn't what it seemed to be. But you guys are more than willing to want to take that fight mm -hmm. if it presents itself. Now, how do you feel about that fight? So, like, like you said, they said we were talking about negotiating that fight. They said we was in negotiations and stuff like that. We never were. Um, but just recently, we just found out he straight declined the fight as is. Like, he's just not trying to fight right now. But um, would I fight to you? Yes, of course. My whole thing is, like I said, I'm going to knock all y'all favorite fighters out. That's, my, that's all I'm doing. Y'all step into the ring with me. You shall pay for even coming in here. So it is what it is. So you you would if you were to fight Till, you would just take it right through him and try to walk right through him? No, of course I ain't finna come out stupid and just crash out. It's everything's still a mental game, coming out there smart, coming out, you know, moving, jabbing, making sure you head out the line and all that kind of stuff, hands up, and placing your shots. But I'm coming for the knockout with anybody. I got you, I got you. Besides Teal, there's a lot of other good options for you out there. Um, I think you mentioned earlier that you want to stay in this division to unify and perhaps go undisputed, right? Yeah. Well, obviously, there's there's another fighter out there who you're very familiar with that a lot of people would like to see you in the ring with, and that's Jerome Boots Ennis. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? I mean, you guys are very, very familiar. You've sparred together on multiple occasions. How do you feel about a fight like that? in the future and will it happen in the in the future or there's going to be a lot of roadblocks before you get to that fight it's bound to happen no matter what we're both young we're both eager to fight um the best so no matter what it's, it's gonna happen how confident are you going into that i mean a lot of people are calling him the best welterweight in the world i'm sure you're going to disagree what i just said about people favorite fighters makes sense makes sense and like i said you're familiar with them mm -hmm. Pops gave you Pops gave 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 you a lot of props about those performances that you had, you know, sparring against him. But um, you know, that's a fight that that I would thing, real quick. The thing is, sparring is sparring. The people grow from sparring, and things change as time goes on. So, 
I, I didn't go go back to the spawn. It's just me as a human being right now, as a man right now. I feel like I'm him. I feel you. I feel you. And the only thing, the only thing that I fear about that champ is, is he going to be around 147 long enough to fight you? Because you're young. I think that you're going to probably be in the welterweight division for a while. I mean, you feel, I mean, do you feel really good at this division? Like, are you yeah. making way easy? Do you feel like you're going to be here for a while? Yeah, even with that right now, I woke up at 158. So making 147 is no problem at all. But even if he goes up to 154, I would have told you my whole game plan. I'm finna come, become undisputed at 147, then eventually go up to 154. So like I said, we both young and we both eager to fight the best. It's bound to happen. That's 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 great news to a real hardcore fan like me. Because, I mean, I would love to see both of you guys um, fight each other, man. You guys are both special talents. But besides Boots, there's a lot of other options out there. I know that um, it's mentioned that you have a potential fight date in November. Is that still on? Oh, uh, Potentially. But there's – obviously you haven't determined the, the opponent yet, right? Uh, no, not yet. We're still looking around. Got you, got you. How do you feel about possibly – Barrios, Stanionis, or even Conor Ben. I mean, that's so, a fight that, that can potentially be made. We're going to scratch Conor Ben. I'm looking for the belts. That's all I'm looking for right now. I'm looking for a unification fight. But if it is um, like a fight that's not for unification, I want, I want the big names. That's the main thing. The, um, the Devin Haney's, Ryan Garcia's, the T.O.'s, uh, Conor Ben. Uh, literally all the big names, that's what we want. If I can't get a belt fight, I want me a big name fight. I think it's safe to say you're looking to become a household name. Yeah. Do what you do, become a household name, do it the way you do it, you know, with explosiveness. I mean, um, you also got the um, the number one contender for the WBO, Giyasav. I think he fought recently in July. That's a fight that can probably be made as well. But I think, like you said, you're probably interested in title fights. Yeah, I'm not looking behind me. I'm looking... I ain't going to say it ahead of me. I'm looking at what's next to me. I know, but it's crazy because, you know, this is where the business of boxing will rear his ugly head, right? Mm. You know, and this is this is the frustration that we have as fans. We want to see the best fight the best. We want to root for fighters like yourself that want that smoke and want to fight the best. But what happens if that other person doesn't want to fight you? Like, mm. how frustrating is that? Because a lot of times, champ, it's about, well, I'd rather not fight him because he's more of a threat and this guy, who's less of a threat, you know, can get me more money. Like, how frustrating is that, man? So, even with that, uh, look at David Benavidez. You know, he wanted to fight Canelo real bad. But after a while, he said, I'm not going to wait on another grown man to, you know what I'm saying, have fun with my career and my legacy. So, therefore, he moved up to 175. And I feel like it's the same way. If, if they don't want to fight me, now, I don't press the issue so many times or anything like that. I try to box you on the corner. You still find a way out. I'm not stunting you no more. It's clear as day that you're not trying to fight. So if we do fight, it's going to be like Mike Tyson versus Michael Spinks. You're already coming in with your head out of the game for real. You're just waiting to get knocked out. So the fans not even going to love it for real. But let me also add the other end. So you got the other end, the one end on plain and simple. They just don't want to fight you. And then you got the other hand, the business of boxing, just plain and simple. It's not as easy as just saying, I want to fight you. Let's make it happen. It's not even that easy. Mm, I know. I know. Even if they want to fight me back, it's still not that easy. But you, you, right now you're fighting on the top rank, right? Yeah. Do you have a uh, certain amount of fights that you are uh, like uh, contracted? Three fight deal, four fights, something like that? Or uh, we got a, um, we going by years. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. So now I'm, I'm going to have you put your promoter hat on. Mm -hmm. If it was your choice right now, give me your next three opponents. WBA, WBC, IBF. Regardless of who's there. Mm -hmm. And then Boots. <laughs> it Just in case he's not there. <laughs> oh, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying, I thought he was part of uh, the champions. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt, no doubt. I don't know, man. Champions, it's just like, I don't know. Something, something tells me that Boots is going to grow out of this division, man. He said he, said he made weight real well. Hmm. He's he's and a he pretty big got, boy. He also said he got the same idea on becoming undisputed. So he want to say that for no reason. Yeah. No, no. I hear that. I hear that. What did you um 
what do you make about so you you spoke a little bit about David Benavides? Yeah. Um, I actually interviewed his dad a couple weeks ago, and you know we spoke about the frustrations of not getting a Canelo fight. Um, but there's rumors, obviously, that maybe Turkey Alashik wants to meet his demands and and have him fight Crawford, and then maybe Benavides. Man, what do you see happening if 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 those three end up uh, fighting each other? Well, Crawford. Benavidez. Crawford, Crawford and Canelo. Yeah, Crawford and Canelo. So with all with Crawford versus both of those two guys, okay, skill wise, it's cool. But the only thing is it's the size comparison. So you got two good fighters off rip. Or great fighters at um um David Benavidez, Benavidez and Canelo versus Crawford. Everybody great, right? But then you add a big size, not just a little size advantage, but a big size advantage into it. You got to go with the bigger guy. So, um, can he pull it off? Most definitely. I got all the uh, belief in the world on Crawford, but there there's some big boys, just as uh, great fighters as well. So, who knows what can happen? Yeah, no, I hear that. But if it, if it's Canelo and Benavidez, do you, do you see the same thing? Benavidez, the bigger guy, walking through Canelo, yeah, even though? Yeah, with that one, I still don't know on that one. I ain't going to lie to you because Canelo, my boy. But the more I watch David, David Benavidez, he my he my he my boy also coming up. You know, uh, Canelo already set in the game. He already did his whole thing. So you know, he had to tell in while David Benavidez coming up. Well, he ain't even coming up. His time is now. So I can't really choose between them two. You got my, you got two of my boys going against each other. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and it'd be one hell of a fight. Yeah. What are, who are, who are, so besides uh, who are some of your favorite fighters that you like to watch? Today or in general? Mm-hmm. B- both in the past and present. Well, today you got um Inouye, Canelo, um Spence, um Real Deal. That's why I be not uh Tank, uh Tank, and then that's for today's fighters. And then for the old school, I can go on and on about that. So I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm a big old school fan, man. Yeah. Huge old school, so we could probably be here for hours. <laughs> All right, Salvador Sanchez, what you think? Woo! What do I think? <laughs> what do I that's, think? That's my what are you dude. talking to, Chad? That's my dude, I'm right? Old, man, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> my boy, my boy James Tony, and um, he had a trilogy with my dude on uh, the Body Snatcher. What's his name again? Mike McCallum. Yeah, Mike McCallum. And then you got my other dude. This is also one of my favorite fighters, Jared McC- uh, McClellan. I wish him and Roy Jones could have fought one day, but. Roy Jones, it, Roy Jones and Mike Tyson, my favorite two all the time. But I would, I really want to see uh, Roy Jones versus the G man. Oh, that would have been crazy, man. It's crazy what happened yeah. to him though in that Nigel Ben fight, man. Mm-hmm. He was a special talent, and Roy. Matter of fact, Conor Ben gonna get that work just because of what his daddy did. One of my favorite fighters. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Say it again, champ. Say it again. <laughs> just because of what your daddy did to my boy Gerald, the G man, I gotta fuck you up. I respect that, man. All great fighters. James Tony, great defensive fighter. I love Hagler. Hagler was my dude. That's my dog. Top three. He number three. Hagler was my dude. Sugar Ray, yeah. obviously. Duran. Which one? Which one? Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. Duran. Uh, yeah, um, I like Duran, too. Matter of fact, all four of them. And then the fifth one, um, Wilf- Wilfred Benitez. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. That, that um, whole little era of welterweights, Aaron Pryor as well. The whole the era right there was all on was nasty. Chat, me and you could do this for hours. I know it. <laughs> I'm going to have to text you back and forth add about this. Pernell, add in Pernell Whitaker. Best def- in my opinion, the best defensive fighter. I, I, I agree. And best I got second place opinion. being James Tony. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. man. Um, speaking of defensive fighters, Shakur, um, they just announced that he's going to be fighting on that Riyadh season card um, that is going to be headlined with the 175-pound um, unification between Bebo and Benavid against Joe Cordina. Yeah. A lot of people are disappointed because they wanted to see him mix it up with Tank, possibly the Cepeda. What do you make of Shakur's style? Because he gets a lot of criticism because he's boring. Do you think he's boring, champ? So now me personally, as a boxing fan, yes, I do. But as a boxer myself, watching him, you see all the smart stuff he do. Um, you know, he 
I ain't gonna say he mastered boxing or anything, but you see the skill on how he can make you miss, but being right there. Now my only thing is, can he make you miss, but catch you with something nasty while he's still standing right there? So he, I feel like he is just too defensive. You get what I'm saying? That's the only thing. For some reason, people love Pernell Whitaker, but um, they don't like Shakur Stevenson. Pernell Whitaker made you miss every punch, and he'll catch you with something, though. Shakur, he'll make you miss every punch and just laugh at you. You know what I'm saying? So he is a very great fighter. He just need to capitalize on opportunities that's right there in his face. So I'm going to ask you because you're a fighter, because the way I see it as a guy looking on the sidelines, I'm thinking that because he's so good defensively, that's why he doesn't want to be irresponsible offensively. He doesn't want to get careless. Mm. So is it more muscle memory? Like at this point in his career, that's just who he is? Or do you think that maybe he can – because we're just waiting for him to hit a second gear. Yeah, so – When he's got a guy hurt, go, and go after him. But I don't know yeah. if his, his muscle memory would allow that. Am I wrong, champ? No, you're right. So – the thing about being defensive is, like you said, you know, not being offensive. So, Sugar Ray Leonard, he got real good defense, but he was getting hit a lot at times because he trying to go for the kill. If somebody trying to fight, you are bound to get hit back. You feel me? So, um, even Pernell Whitaker, when he's trying to start killing you, and th- Bud Crawford, another one, when he started trying to kill you, now he started getting hit a little bit, but guess what? At the end of the day, you still dead. So, it's all about just taking those chances and knowing I may get hit, but I know what I hit you with is going to be a whole lot more. But you got to just be able to take those risks. So if he ever fights Tank, who do you see winning that fight? I got to go with Tank simply because he won't take those risks. Um, even if it go the whole 12 rounds, I feel like he might just out-punt him, out-point um, Shakur simply because he's not trying to punch back as often and also – Tank throwing bricks, so he gonna be real defensively sound. Then, so that's like if it ends early, we all know who's gonna win that. If it go the distance, I feel like I'll take an out point. I hear that, man. Either way, man, we got to get these fights going on, man. Um, champ, let uh, let my viewers and your fans know where they can follow you on social media. You can catch me on IG at officialb.norman. You know what I'm saying? I just started posting and everything. I'm trying to get my game up. I'm trying to get with the youngest on how they post up on social media all the time. I'm trying. I'm a, I'm an old timer, but I'm working on it. You feel me? But, yeah, we getting active, baby. Look, me and you both, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm new at this game, and I'm learning every day, man. And, mm-hmm. and it's an absolute blast. And for my viewers, if you are new to watching my videos, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. This is how we do it up here at the Hangout Spot. We got champions of the world coming here to chop it up with us, man. So make sure you're along for the ride. Champ, I'm going to tell you what I told Pops, man. Anytime you come to the Hangout Spot, you are family. Yeah. You are always welcome. Yeah, you cool people. You cool people. Listen, anytime anytime you want to come back here and chop it up with me, you are always welcome. Hopefully you'll come back as you continue to mow through the welterweight division. I appreciate you, boss, man. And make sure y'all tell y'all favorite fighters to come get at me. I'm a, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let everybody know because I want to <laughs> see them get that smoke with Big B Dog, the assassin, yeah, Brian yeah. Norman Jr. It's but they out for a reason. I got a hit list, man. That's all I'm saying. Listen, I can't wait to continue. Like I said, I can't wait to see you continue to mow through the welterweight rankings, and uh, and make sure you give pops my best, mm-hmm. and um, and you got to come back. You got to come back and chop it up with me again, man. I got you on that, boss, man. For my viewers, again, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the love and support. This is your boy, Johnny, signing out with the WBO, the welterweight champion of the world, Brian Norman Jr., and I will talk to everybody soon.